Baba da ba da ba da ba da ba 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 do da ba ba do da scooby da ba da ba da ba da dum dum dum. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the DNVR Nuggets' Serbian Corner. It is a podcast hosted by a guy from Serbia on all things Denver Nuggets. My name is Miroslav Cuk, and I am having a nasty case of basketball overload. As if Nuggets, Lakers, Western Conference Finals isn't exciting enough, plus whatever is going on out east. I just watched two games from the EuroLeague Final Four tournament along with my buddy Adam Mares while we were trying to uninvasively get EuroLeague basketball closer to the US audience via the ESPN Plus's streaming thingy. Now, None of that interests you, I get that, so let's get down to business. After three games, the Nuggets are now 3-0 versus the Los Angeles Lakers, and the series is all but, all but over. In game one, we've seen that insane 34-21-14 game from Jokic, along with two blocks and 70% from the field. We've also seen Jamal's ear infection game. He overcame the pain on offense, scoring 31 but he was also a clear and intentional target of one LeBron Ray- Raymond James on defense. But we also got the amazing KCP game and also a very good side rolls by MPJ and Bruce Brown. Then in game two, we've seen two and a half quarters of very dodgy play from the Nuggets. One good run from them late in the third. And then a three minute barrage from them in the fourth that decided the game and gave them the 2-0 lead. It was a late Murray Flurry that followed a very bad shooting night from him. And Jokic was a bit passive and had some strange turnovers late, mostly trying to involve Aaron Gordon more. LeBron looked old at the end of it and bailed out on the Nuggets, bailed out the Nuggets with some deep three-point attempts that had no chance of hitting. Then last night in game three, we've seen something special. A very rare thing. Some would say rarer than a four leaves clover. A subpar Nikola Jokic game in the first three quarters of the game. He did finish with 24, 6, and 8 on 47% from the field, which would be an amazing Joel and Bead playoff game, but we know this ain't it. Got to be better than that. One other small thing we saw was a 30 point first half from Jamal Murray, who absolutely deserved. Uh, 0.5 win shares for this game alone, but honestly, I was too lazy to check if that's actually true. Other than that, an Arizona double from MPJ, 14, 10, and 6, and 32 combined points from KCP and Bruce Brown. KCP was little from all positions, and Bruce was just a menace with some circus putbacks. My main takeaway, and I will not bore you anymore, with my solo chat. My main takeaway from the series so far, last week I asked the Nuggets to torch them fools and they obliged. The gap in quality between the two teams teams is huge. The Timberwolves should hate themselves for losing that playing game against the Lakers team. All right. I think I've lost one of my my guest for today. Let me introduce my guest for today until we get another one. So... Me and Yoda. <laughs> oh, okay. Here's Hold the other down. one. We're in the full, full, uh, full uh, team now. So these are my guys, my guests that have been here often enough that they already have their own pair of slippers in the lobby. They're like Tango and Cash, like Bud Spencer and Terence Hill, like Edward Furlong and that other weird kid from the arcade in Terminator 2. They are <laughs> the hosts of Once Cult Nuggets podcast, The Dig. Welcome to my good buddies, Nick Herzog and Jeremy Pauly. What's up, buddy? So, uh, who are we? Which one is which? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know. You, you, pick, you pick sides. You want to be the weird kid from the arcade from Terminator 2? You know, I don't want to be the weird kid. <laughs> I mean, he, he he doesn't have to put up with any of the crap of the plot, so he just goes his own way. Yeah, that's true. He doesn't get killed either. 
Wait, the kid gets killed? No, he doesn't. No, but, I mean, but the... neither one. But I mean, this <laughs> this kid just appears. Yeah, has a little role. Should we just turn this into a T two in chat? Let's do. <laughs> Dude, it's dark an enough hour already. And a half rewatchables. How are we going to go from death to like somebody's <laughs> three point percentage of the series? Yeah, that, that, that of a kid. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Okay. We'll try to to get better from here on. So, before I ask you about your big takeaways from the you know Western Conference Finals so far, let me show you a tweet of mine from six days ago, just before the Western Conference Finals started. Talk about the auto nepotism, huh? So. <laughs> I I didn't poll anybody. I just gather around the the predictions from the Nuggets people, the Nuggets talking heads before the the Western Conference Finals. And the reason I did this wasn't to get you know my guys on blast because many Lakers fans were really angry about <laughs> these takes. They were like like no way, man. These guys. Don't, don't watch basketball at all. They have no idea what they're talking about, so on, so forth. I got a 129 bookmarks for this tweet, probably from guys that want to <laughs> dunk on all of us because Lakers, you know, took care of us. And at the end, the only thing I can say, and that's what Nick already put on his, uh, you know, name under his face, we are all cowards. <laughs> so... Adam Maris, Denver in five. Matt Moore, Denver in six. Blackburn, Denver in five. Swipe Cam, Denver in five. Actually, six. He told me it was six. Brandon Vogt, Denver in six. Mike Olson, Denver in six. Nick Herzog, Denver in six. Coward. Voya, Denver in uh, five. And I said, Denver in five. I know. Now, no, don't show me that. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Jeremy. For the people you... listening, it's a text of me saying Denver goes four and one. Four and one. Okay, okay. So in five. five. Okay, so you were also a coward. Okay, that's yeah. that's fine. <laughs> um, yeah, we should have all had a sweep, obviously. Um, <laughs> no, I no, knew no. it. The second I said in six, I felt guilty. I felt bad. I immediately said that. I, I think it was in this thread, actually. I said my gut said four or five, but I just, I, I felt like the refs were good for a win and LeBron, you know, was good for a win, something like that. Uh, turns yeah. out, no. Lakers decided um, to not show up. Uh, just just and... to make it clear, the Nuggets didn't sweep the Lakers yet. We have well. to wait until tomorrow to see if it will, in fact, be the first sweep in Nuggets playoff history. But but we forgot about the... This is a three-team matchup here between the Nuggets and the Lakers and the refs. And so right. there's just there's no way that the Nuggets get out of here Four, four, and oh. I, I, I don't see that happening. Uh, the, the little text right above my four and one call was, uh, uh, I'm just gonna read it. I'm having a hard time believing that the refs can do that much. We had Lad in this text group who was always calling doom on the Nuggets and trying to fire every single person. So I, I was just pointing out that as much as people really bit into this fantasy that the NBA was gonna try and get the Lakers and the Celtics, you know, blah 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 blah. Uh, it, it's just. We had so much talent. It, it wasn't even like a matchup thing. It, we, we're so far ahead in talent that there's just no way the refs could really like make a win, make, make an actual uh, round out of it. So I give them one game still. Well, they tried. It happen. Game huh? three, they tried. I mean, they had Jokic out of the game. No, I, don't know. On that. I mean, yes, yes and no. That yes fourth no. foul was... Oh my goodness! But 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 at the end of the game, when the Lakers needed it most, the, the refs did call uh, LeBron for what was it? Uh, an on there was a challenge that didn't that didn't go their way. Yeah, which would yeah, have been so a, I was yeah like, that could have been yeah, a spot. It, it it made me feel better about the whole thing because you know when we we wind up not I don't know how to put it. Because we see uh, either a bad call happen or a lack of a good call, to us, we feel like um, improper justice has happened. Refs represent justice. They somehow screwed it up. So that winds up being personal. And it's really hard as viewers and lovers of these teams to not start to feel like the refs are always throwing games and things like that. Now, granted, we know that that's actually happened. 
<laughs> like that's that's legal history. But uh, I I felt better when I started seeing some calls be uh, in their favor later on. So, you know, we'll see. I'm actually super glad that that fourth foul on Jokic happened mm. and that it was challenged and the whole world could have seen it had nothing to do with a foul mm -hmm. and they still let it go because they needed him out of the game. If I'm a so brush happy. on your calf is an incidental contact, what is incidental contact? <laughs> I, I'm just I've glad been thinking about because that of all of the, the, the whiny Lakers fans who are, you know, saying to everybody that the league hates the Lakers. Right. The league doesn't want the Lakers in the finals because, of course, you know, nobody wants the money, the revenue that would generate. And we just have one proof. Like, okay, give me something that's more outrageous than this. And I'll say, okay, fine. But yeah, I mean, in I, hindsight, Jokic was fresh in the fourth quarter. And I, I think... He was actually pretty good. bad. He, he needed that break. He was pretty yeah, bad before it, that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it, it actually turned out, turned out okay because KCP, Brown, these guys were able to keep him in it uh, during his, his time on the bench. And then when he came back in fresh, I mean, the, everybody else was pretty gassed at that point on both both teams I think and then it was Jokic's to to bring home for us but so yeah in the end it worked out but um it, yeah that was the game I mean it, the, you know the, the Lakers definitely got some favorable calls they're at home that's I think the game where it became clear to me I think I was already leaning this way but I definitely after game three got there and I think pretty much from what I'm hearing from Lakers fans and 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 uh, some of the people that cover their team at this point, everybody knows the Nuggets are just better. That's that's just that's where the, the the take is now. I think is this is they're just a better team. Like if the Lakers can't win that game, it's over. Um, I actually think Lakers are not soft. I actually think they mm -hmm. put off a pretty good fight with what they had. It's just it it really wasn't enough what they had. Yeah, if they weren't the Lakers, <laughs> if we were able to take our biases out of this and you looked at their season, they've done a really good job putting something together because they were mm -hmm. at, they were actually a really bad team. They deserved the record that they got. And by putting some new pieces in, um, Austin Reeves, who was already there, like find ways to work together. They do have something going for themselves. They are able to create some action um, at kind of every step that you want it to. But uh, I'm at, I, I am actually surprised that they made it this far, um, just through and through. <laughs> it, it's like um, when you play a video game and your characters have like five different stats and you want this guy because he's got good three point and you got want this guy because he's like got a good block or something like that. The Nuggets just beat them at every single thing that a team is good at in, in my mind. Uh, I also wanted to say, uh, uh, Nick, you asked what is incidental contact, and uh, any text message I have ever sent Miroslav was incidental contact. Uh, I fell over backwards and uh, slapped my phone, and it sent a message. You are the worst, man. Uh, it's true. The Lakers faced some pretty bad teams in the playoffs, so they were lucky enough. Uh, first of all, Kudos to them for beating Minnesota, who is in fact a better team than them. But then M they Memphis? Faced, no, the first Minnesota, and then they became the seventh seed, and then they played. The oh, Memphis. oh, right, 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 right. Yeah. So first of all, Minnesota should have put him in into into eight and meet the Nuggets in the first round, and mm -hmm. it would be even sweeter, honestly. But okay, Memphis is a really bad playoff team, and plus. They right. had two. They had two guys less than they they should have have had. They didn't have you know the the horses under the basket. But still, that's a that was a really bad second seed. I mean, even mm -hmm. even if you count those those uh, missing guys in, they should have still be be better as a two seed than what they've been. And then they got Golden State Warriors. Who is like the the fakest, uh, you know, reigning champion ever? Like a team that cannot win against anybody outside of their own arena, anybody. So yeah, yeah, nice, nice job coming to the Western Conference Finals, and I'm afraid 
that he'll have to do for the Lakers. <laughs> yeah, and I got to say, too, I mean, this has come up a, a little bit about, you know, KCP being on our team this time, uh, you know, as opposed to a couple of years ago. Well, I mean, the reason for that is because LeBron wanted Westbrook, and they tr- they traded KCP in that Westbrook deal. That's, That's a disaster. Right. What a disastrous trade. But why are you, like, and, and so to me, I like, if we're going to say, like, Jeremy wanted to give them credit for having put something together this year, I agree with that. I mean, based on the way they were playing in the first half, uh, it looked like they weren't even a playoff team. But why were they in that position in the first place? It's because they are constantly trying to cheat the the, the process. They're, they're constantly trying to take short steps, you know, shortcuts, and, and, and just buy their way into championships instead of building the right way. And that's, to me, the narrative here. If the Nuggets can win the championship this year, even if it, even if it's like Nuggets heats in the heat in the finals, I think for me it's having a process, having a team identity, having a culture is so much more sustainable than just trying to you know buy a big three and bring them to a, a, a you know coastal city. I, I think a lot of GMs are, are maybe going to be rethinking that or just so you know. It, it, some of the teams like the Nuggets that are smaller market teams will just keep having success or the Bucks teams like this um, by building their own, their own thing, you know, and, well, and we, it takes some patience. You're going to have, you know, two, three down years or, or whatever, but that's the right way to build. You, you wind up needing not only the right like ethos, but the, you, the right players have to fall your way and it's personality. Like we're seeing that with Memphis. Um, we're seeing, um, when, when teams give – well, Philadelphia. I'm in Philly. Uh, I saw that somebody commented, Joe in Philly. What's up, homie? Uh, like, when you give in to your stars, you set the – the um, what, what will be allowed. And these days, when stars run the league, if they have the wrong personality, that will infect the entire team. That winds up being – what your team story is yeah mm-hmm. and so for for getting Jokic, it's like it's ridiculous that we wound up with somebody that good but at the same time his personality like and murray as much as um you know in the past we've wanted to maybe call out some things on why some players might be better matches i remember all of our little trade things for jimmy butler you know four years ago or whatever and you know every once in a while his, his personality too it's just it, it is matched it's it's in sync with Jokic. And from there down, yeah, you have something you can build with. But I think what you're what you're saying, while I agree with it with my entire heart, the reality of pulling that off is is you've got to now not only match you know top ten talent, you've got to have somebody follow you with top ten talent, but they also have to be have it like top ten character too. Like that's just crazy. But we have it. Hey, right, yeah. <laughs> Okay, before well, I just don't, you can't really I mean you can cheat it for a season maybe but, but I just don't think it's I don't think it's sustainable really and I would rather like now we have I, like I would rather be trying to, especially as a Nuggets fan a small market team that's not going to attract you know free agents every year who are going to be willing to come here and like uh you know leave the, the coastal city they're in or whatever um now we have something sustainable like the Spurs built, like the Warriors built with homegrown guys that are totally bought in that really seem like a family. I mean, after that clip from the locker room last night mm-hmm. was really powerful to me. I mean, mm-hmm. I think this, this is a team that believes they are really close. They all seem to love playing with each other and, and playing from alone. And it, it, that's just something you can't, you can't just throw a bunch of guys together. I think we're seeing that in this i think this run has been a great example that the suns try to do the same thing this year just just throw kevin durant on your team and we'll win win the whole thing and everybody's picking him to go to the finals like that's, that's not how this works that's beautiful before before we get to you know out there let's take a short mm-hmm. break and then we'll uh, talk a, bl- a bit about our heroes okay we're back Let's start with the most interesting player on the Nuggets, at least in these series. But when you look at the last seven years of the Nuggets, Jamal Murray is just the most interesting guy there, the most polarizing guy out there. And are we sure 
Jamal oh, Murray. You can go is higher than that. The second best player in the Western Conference Finals. Are we sure that he's not the best player in the Western Conference Finals? Okay, first drunk take of the. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Let, no, me, it's let a, me open a bottle for that. It's uh, it's it's impossible. This is the thing about the Nuggets having a team, right? It's hard to distinguish these things. Like who who's more responsible for them winning? I mean, like. Jokic and Murray are at this point like a like a married couple or something. They're, you know, it's the the two man game they're playing is unstoppable. Nobody has shown. You know, we kept hearing about the Lakers' defense. They can't stop it. Nobody can stop it. The Nuggets have made. They have a team that is unguardable, and they only they can only beat themselves. And so to so to really like pair like like obviously Murray can't be doing what he's been doing without Jokic. Like that that's. So you you can't you can't put him in a vacuum and, and be like is he better than Jokic? Obviously Jokic every everything revolves around him. He's the center of gravity. He's the star. The, the solar system revolves around. Um, but Murray has won them really al- almost by himself for the last two games. I mean, if he doesn't put up that first half uh, last night that he did, I, you know that game probably is that, is much more out of hand by halftime um, with with Jokic having an off night. And then obviously the fourth quarter he had in game two was 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 monster. So um I, I think he's been I, I think definitely better than AD and LeBron have been in this series, at least at least in terms of just the, the impact on winning. Right? And, you know, if you look at the numbers, AD's numbers have been great. I don't feel like he really like the Nuggets really feel him in this series. I, I don't know, like a little bit on defense. I mean, he's a great defensive player. You know, he's had a couple blocks on Jokic, whatever. He's disrupted some things, but I, like, I don't think I, I I don't see a tangent. I think LeBron has has been much more has been playing much more winning basketball, even if even if the numbers aren't aren't all there. Um, and and even though AD's numbers are better, I I just don't I, I don't think he's had near the impact that, that Jamal has had on the series. I'm I'm surprised that you. Uh... You just kind of brought up LeBron as being the person who would be above Murray. I I have AD yeah, there. Think, yeah. Like so, I'm gonna go with the. Um, I mean, the question was, is he the second best player in the series? And I'm gonna say no. Is he having the second best series of any player? Like, okay, you know, maybe. Uh, What's the difference? I still, I, I know uh, it's all about the technicality, <laughs> uh, especially with Miroslav. I got to jump on it when I see it. I jump <laughs> all over that. Um, but, uh, you know, still at, at this point, the the way that a, a, a big, if you're one of the top bigs in the league, the your impact on the game um, in so many different ways is still something where I, um, I, 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 AD seems to be doing a really good job. Uh, just not, not necessarily in this series compared to Jamal. Ah, oh, guys. First of all, Jeremy doesn't think that LeBron was the best player on the Lakers. No, he's fourth. Uh, no, well, fourth in this <laughs> matchup. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. I get that. You have it behind that. Rui, too? No, no, no. I mean, like, behind Jamal, <laughs> okay. AD, and Yoko. I think of it on the Lakers. So, so that's there are, spicy. There are two LeBrons in this series. So you have the first LeBron that plays for the first 30 minutes of the game. And then you have the other LeBron that is forced mm-hmm. to play more at the Ooh. age of 38. And he, yeah, and he's gassed in the fourth. So the guy that plays the first 30 minutes is by far the best Lakers player. Like, AD can drop 40 and it doesn't matter. You, you do not win with AD's 40 if... You know, LeBron is not including everybody. LeBron is right now the only player in the league that's comparable to Nikola Jokic by being a fulcrum of the offense. And there's absolutely no AD without LeBron. We've seen it in New Orleans. They've had one good playoff run against Portland, and that was it. And that team was loaded. That team wasn't bad. That team had 
Drew Holiday, that team was a good team. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just, a, for me, it's a matter between LeBron and Jamal. And what am I going to say? LeBron, uh, Jamal dropped 30 every game in the series. He's had five assists in all three games in the series. So what am I going to say? He's just had a better games than LeBron. LeBron, I mean, it's great. They always want to say before the season, like, should we give another MVP to LeBron because he's doing something no other 38-year-old guy ever did? <laughs> So like move him to the 38 plus league then. Right. If you if you want to honor the his senior age. tour. F that. I mean go retire, old man. Oh uh, Miroslav, you're on to something. We if need an want, old man basketball want, league. Oh, that would be incredible. To, yeah, of course. It would be awesome. League. That would be so good. Like a bunch there of would be some really like, good ballers NBA there. players. It would be the worst fantasy game to play ever because your players <laughs> would be like injured for the season like, every two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be going through players every <laughs> single week. The rosters would have to have like 35 people on them just to be able to put like eight out for a game. Yeah, so Boxing you can buy knee surgeons everywhere. <laughs> you can then compare AD to Jamal Murray because, you know, AD was miraculously healthy throughout these three games of, you know, wrestling with Nikola Jokic, which is pretty amazing to me. And... Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to have to give it to Jamal. And, you know, it makes sense. If you are way better than your opponent, you probably don't have just the best player. You have two best players in the series. Something about, like, if you if you were to just look at the numbers, like Jamal versus AD in this series, it, they're pretty comparable. Um, you could maybe, I don't know, maybe even make the argument. AD made, made four shots in right. game two. Yeah, and that's Four the, shots. Thing. the thing is, even, even in the 40 point game, like you just said, a lot of his 40 points came in, in this trash time when they were down by 20 points. And you know, the pressure is sort of off at that point. It's game one. Yeah, you know, that's one that on the road they're they're supposed to lose. Um, that's where he's racking up a lot of these stats. When the game is actually getting into crunch, okay. So what in game three, the must win game, what's the big adjustment they make on defense? They have LeBron guarding Jokic why <laughs> if ad is the best defensive player of our lifetime like we, we keep hearing why does lebron have to guard him because ad is getting torched and it's because he likes to be in this roamer role or whatever right what does that actually be that means he basically doesn't want to have to be responsible to lock somebody down one-on-one -on -one. he wants to be able to float and just get the show he blocks like no, I no, just, not, I, his not responsible uncapable or, or that right absolutely yeah. uncapable I just You've see a it. real, I see a real like a softness in his game. I don't know how to, at least right now, maybe, you know, a couple years ago when they went on that bubble run, I mean, he had some, he had some monster shots that, you know, he, he, he had that dagger three that killed the nuggets. Um, and what was that game one um, or two or whatever it was, but uh, this series, I mean, it, there's just such a difference, I guess is what I'm getting at between the type of points that Murray is scoring the types of threes he's hitting, the types of shots. Like Murray has this feel for like, like momentum shifts and like the moments when you really, when like his team really needs him to dominate or needs a big three or, or whatever. Um, and AD just doesn't seem to have any kind of feel for stuff like that. Like he just, he puts up numbers and like, yeah, but like, were they at the right time in the game? Were they like when the game really push came to shove, did he show up? And more often than not, it's no. And you'll hear that from Lakers fans too. It's just, it's just beautiful. We had Joel Embiid moving away from <laughs> Nikola this season in a game that they, at the end, won because of the meltdown in fourth quarter, whatever. But before that, he was moved away because he couldn't do anything against Nikola. We've had Rudy Gobert. We have Carl Anthony Towns. We had DeAndre Ayton. Now we have AD. Nobody has the answer. I mean, at, They're some, point, no. They're at some point, we'll need to brush a bit about the Miami.
potentially, mm-hmm. but we'll see. We have no idea how that series ends because mm-hmm. Boston might win two games in Miami and completely come back into Yeah, I wouldn't series. be surprised if that one goes seven. It's a, it's a yeah, weird. Absolutely. Weird I match. actually root for it because let's have 10 days off for the Nuggets uh-huh. before the final series. Why I agree. Not? Let's let's they, well let's, they show let, they could have six weeks off and still <laughs> turn it on in game one. So yeah, let's let Nicola have seven consecutive pool days. That's right. uh, <laughs> Pokemon <laughs> Pokemon pool days. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I think you can hunt Pokemon in the pool as well. Yeah, sure. There's gotta be a way. Sure. Okay. Now we'll take uh, another short break. Go find and, Jeremy. Yeah, hopefully Jeremy will come back. <laughs> And if you stay with us, I promise you we will not sound less drunk in the next segment. <laughs> okay. It is Jokic time. So... Uh, he had 34... It's Jokic time. No, this is not... This is not good. Wait, I made a mistake. One second, I need to to present another screen. And here it is. Okay. So, he has had 34, 21, and 14. Then he had 23, 17, and 12. And finally, he had that weird 24, 6, and 8. But honestly, he only had like 9 points coming into the third quarter. So that was a really weird game from him. The first two games of the Lakers series were the first consecutive triple dozens in NBA playoff history. So he had 12 or more in three categories in two consecutive seasons, two consecutive games that never happened in playoffs before. And that one was a little bit weird, but yeah, what you gonna do? So. You can see on the screen the the TPA, the true point added graph of these playoffs. And I didn't show it here just to show how dominant Nikola is. Like, we know he'll be over there in the TPA graph. It's just, uh, it should be called the Jokic graph yeah. by now. And there's no matter. But I, I wanted for you to really concentrate on this big bunch in the middle. Like, when Jokic gets better, the big bunch of players gets more dense together mm. because that's how the graphs work and try to find Gary Payton too <laughs> he is like in the dead middle of the middle of the pack because behind him is Joel Embiid that's that's <laughs> that's all what I wanted to, to ask so tell me <laughs> tell me Nicholas yes sir are you at least a bit concerned about uh, Nicholas last last game or maybe like those two last quarters in games one and two as well no no he's fine um I it, it's look it's a tough series and they're I mean they are laser focused on, on him everything they're doing on defense is to slow him down um you know we talked just talked about this in the last segment but I mean largely why LeBron is so fatigued in these fourth quarters is that he is having to work so hard on defense for the first, you know, two, three quarters of the game. Um, and pounding with Jokic in that game, you know, whether his shots are dropping or not, you know, last night they weren't they weren't going uh, early. You know, he had a monster um, fourth quarter. He had 15 in the fourth and, and even missed like three free throws. It could have even been very similar to the first quarter Murray had. Um, but, yeah, I mean, the just the the attention that he draws – and his ability to make plays for other people means that if his shot isn't falling, he can still kill you. And that is that's the the, the really truly great players are like that. Um, Steph Curry is not always hot. You know, he he has games where he's just not hitting, but he draws so much attention. He he he's he's constantly moving, constantly a threat to get going at any second. And so he just is continually creating good shots for his for his teammates, even when his shot's not falling. Um, Jokic is even, I think, even the harder matchup than even Steph Curry just because of his size. And and so he really opens up um, or he, he has he has the ability to score from anywhere on the floor at, if from any kind of setup from a post up from anywhere. Um, 
in, in a, a, a little bit more, uh, I mean, I'm comparing him to one of the all time greats. So that's, that's where he's at now. And so, yeah, last, really all I'm seeing is just, you know, the, the series got tighter. They're playing, they're, they're really grinding on him. Uh, they're sending bodies at him, you know, all game long, rotating people on him. He had a game where shots that he normally makes weren't going in. I mean, he had plenty of good looks, easy shots that he normally, for him, are normally easy, easy shots that he shoots, you know, 70, 80% on um, in the lane that just were rimming out <laughs> last night. He was, uh, it just wasn't, it just wasn't going for him. Um, so no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not worried. He, he's, he's the unique type of player that he could have a game where he scores 10 points uh, and the Nuggets would still, could still win. Even even at this stage. Okay, I'm gonna put the tin oil tin foil hat on. <laughs> so Jeremy made a good point that that game three last night would get out of hand if Jamal didn't have that first half, 30 points in the first half. And I agree. But are we sure that Jokic wasn't like, oh cool, Jamal's got it. Like I can chill, I can chill a bit. Oh. I mean, that doesn't explain the missed bunnies. Well, mm. at least not completely. If you lose your focus a bit, that can make sense. But they really are a married couple, and you know, married couples tend to understand when's the other one's time to shine, mm. you know? or they're not and married for very long. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good married couples. Yeah, yeah, happy, happily married couples. Right, they know how to recognize the moment when they should just step back into the background and let the other one cook. And I don't know. I mean, I mean, I I also have zero concern about Nicholas' form getting into last. I don't know how many games, five at least, maybe seven, eight. I don't know. But yeah, I I kind of uh, I kind of feel that uh, that we are safe with him, at least. So let's take yeah. Another... And, uh, yeah, sorry. Oh, just real quick. Yeah, I was just gonna say I I do definitely think Jokic was passing up his offense in the first half to to feed Murray. I mean, I think everybody was. Once Murray got going, you could tell that they were all. I mean, it was just feed Murray the rock, like just get, get him the ball every time down the court i think I, you could even i i feel like i could almost like visually see it on in Jokic's game that he was just looking for murray um that may have been a you know maybe they went a little bit too far with that you know yeah okay so he's hot but yeah you, you don't have to get the ball like every time down the <laughs> down the court if you have a wide open shot or something take it you know um and maybe that made him force a couple things to murray that weren't quite there because you know he his passing wasn't quite as crisp in that first half either. So I don't know. I need to go back. I haven't watched the replay yet, but um, it wouldn't surprise me if, if a few of those, those passes and things were forced, but yeah, I mean, overall, I think he was fine to take a back seat to Murray and let Murray cook. And that's again, something special about this team. Okay. I want to make a bit of a longer last segment. So we'll take a short break here. And after the break, first we'll talk about some role-playing heroes and I'm not talking about the heroes of Might and Magic 3 so don't go anywhere. All right, final segment here. We've spent a lot of time talking about the peanut butter and jelly and what about the other flavors of this delicious meal? Let's start with MPJ. I just spoke to Adam Mares, you know, on the watch long an hour ago, how we are right now getting a 100 percentile version of what the Nuggets need from MPJ. So I was hard on him for years, wanted him to earn my trust, and I guess more importantly, Michael Malone's trust. But six assists last night? consistently having 10 rebounds per game. I mean, can you ask for anything more from MPJ right now? Feeling no. the role perfectly? 
Yeah, no, I mean, I, I guess a couple more shots could go in, but he's shooting fine. Like his percentages have, have remained elevated throughout the playoffs. He's been one of the best three point shooters in the league throughout. Um, no, this is exactly the, <laughs> the MPJ I want on this team. I mean, I think he's showing that he is, he's fine to be the third option. Um, I, I'm sure a guy like that, you know, you know, deep down somewhere, he, he would like to be, you know, the number one or number two guy on a team, maybe at some point. But if it's there, it's not affecting his his play. He doesn't seem he seems to genuinely just want to win. And he understands that in in this role, I mean, he is a killer for them. Like this you you, you bottle up Jokic, you get you get a bad shooting game from Jokic. M- M- Murray, let's say, let's say you can you can keep Murray under control. You have a guy like MPJ that's perfectly capable of scoring a 30 <laughs> off off of you know 12 shots something like that, you know, 14, you know, high efficiency points. Um, and then, yeah, his size is such a mismatch problem for every team in the league. Nobody has anybody, maybe the Clippers or, you know, Paul George or somebody, but like, there's like nobody that has wing defenders that size um, who, who can affect his shot at all. So he's just, yeah, to me, he is like the Nuggets kind of wild card player. And in basically every game of the series, I think, or in the season, in the, in the playoffs um he's been great like I, I i he's finding ways to 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 make winning plays even even on nights where he's not scoring as much and his rebounding has been consistent and big and i think his defense has really gone up a notch in the playoffs i think we're definitely seeing that he he can be a capable defender i think he's actually caused them some problems you know i think it was like 3 years ago Ryan Blackburn had a tweet like how underappreciated thing about Michael Porter is the fact that he has so few turnovers. Mm. And I had an honest comment on that, which sounded snarky, but it really wasn't. I, I promise it wasn't. When I said, well, it's hard for you to make turnovers if you never pass the ball. Right. If you finish every you know action with a shot. And... I, I even think that that uh, Michael Porter Sr., the coach, got into that, you know, back and forth on Twitter. Mm-hmm. And I want to make a public apology to Michael Porter Sr. for ever doubting uh, MPJ's good upbringing. Mm. So it is so impressive to me the way he is looking the way he is uh, dealing with his career he's striving for greatness but at the same time being willing to be a part of a bigger organism that the nuggets are Mm -hmm. i mean his career could have taken a completely different path he could have been you know picked by houston rockets and you know making 25 points per game mm-hmm. on relatively bad efficiency because, you know, you're not playing with good players. But I think what he is doing right now is so much more meaningful. Especially, I mean, in the future, he is still locked in with the Nuggets for a long time mm-hmm. after this season. You know, there will be situations where Nikola Jokic has to miss a month, Jamal Murray has to miss a month, so these are the moments that he can, you know, rise to the occasion and just be a, a great second option or a first mm-hmm. option, even if needed. So uh, kudos to, to, to Michael Porter Jr. and kudos to Coach Porter because what we are seeing is not something you see every day, especially with players with such high upside like Michael Porter had back when he was a high school super. Yeah, no, I think it's a great point because I mean you can imagine if he had different people in his ear, in his you know people in his orbit, you know t- constantly telling him, "Man, dude, you're a, you're the best player in the world, man. You're number one. Come like on. you need to you know something <laughs> like this happens to guys, and it just you know and they make these bad decisions, Jeremy Grant, um, <laughs> like <laughs> to to leave winning situations to go seek individual glory and i mean if that's what you want okay like that's that's your choice but 
for me, I I would much rather be on a on a winning team that's built a great culture. And and if that means I have to score, you know, five or six less points a game, I mean, he's still making thirty three million a year. Whatever, it's like he's getting paid. So, um, at at some point, I think uh, you know, just enjoying the situation here, it is more important than a few more million dollars, maybe. Michael Porter could have pulled the the Bones Highland, hmm? and he would be gone, because Nuggets are now. I mean. It's obvious right now. They're the betting favorites for the championship. And we'll talk a bit on the tail end of this show who we want to see in the finals. But at this point of Nuggets evolution, it's all hands on deck. There can be no rotten you know, fruits in the basket. Everybody has to be on the same page, everybody has to to row in the same direction. And yeah, we've seen it not going well with Bones Highland. We should be happy that it was only Bones Highland. It wasn't mm-hmm. somebody uh, more important to the team. And uh, yeah, a big thank you to Michael Porter for being the pro's pro of this season. And I agree with Adam Mares when he says that his season is the biggest storyline of this season. Mm-hmm. Like, we knew what we'll get from Jamal, probably. We knew what we'll get from Nikola Jokic. But this kind of buy-in is something for the books, and and it will not uh, go unnoticed, I promise. Yeah, and, and the thing is, he is still so young. I mean, the the big thing, obviously, with him is his back. You know, it, like how long how long is that going to hold up? Um, it's going to end his career early. It, it just will. I think Nuggets fans need to understand this. Like we're on, it, you're kind of on borrowed time with him a little bit. Like whatever we can get, if we can get a couple more years <laughs> like this, three, four, four years, that would be awesome. Um, uh, you know, I I had the same back surgery and. Uh, they tell you when you get that, that once you, once you have one fusion, um, you're going to probably need one every 10 years or so after that. And I mean, those are just, you know, it's a major surgery. It's just like it coming back from one is amazing already that he's done that. Uh, but to keep, yeah, to keep having back surgeries, you know, it's just not, it's, it, he, He's not gonna. He's not gonna have the career that Jokic is gonna have. He's not gonna play to or LeBron. He's not gonna play to into his mid thirties probably at a high level. So, um, having said that, though, he has so much talent that he's gonna continue to improve as long as he can stay on the court, and that makes the Nuggets like. Even if you just want to take the core that they have now, like they're all playing the best basketball they've ever played, and they still have more to go. I think. Uh, Jokic might be about where he is going to be. I don't know if there's another oh, level he's not. for him. He probably, yeah, probably not. He seems like he's added something every year. Um, Murray is still super young, and he's he's really kind of just coming into his his prime right now. But he still has some some things he can add to his game. Uh, and then MPJ just has this unlimited upside. I mean, he's got Kevin Durant upside. So this really is the, the type of core that this can be a, a like a Spurs like you know, Parker, Duncan, Ginobili thing that you can you could win four or five championships with if if things break right for him. Okay, we've... I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but... Yeah, we, we've given enough minutes for Michael Porter and he's earned them. Let's go now to Brucey B, one of my favorite people on the planet. So that redirection put back last night mm-hmm. was like a da- complete dagger. It was over after that. There was no coming back. Yeah, big from, three from the in the fourth, too, when they were getting close. Yeah. He had a bunch of big shots. He had dagger shots. So uh, he might be a one-hit wonder for the Nuggets, like the Hanson brothers. Like, you know. How dare you? It's going to be stuck in my head all week now. Thanks. <laughs> Sorry. Sure. <laughs> you want to go with more, more than words, maybe? More than words? <laughs> Maybe a bit better than that. No, no, uh, just, just keep him out. But that one hit wonder is such a beautiful hit. For me, yes. he is a nugget forever. No, not the duo. Not Mbop. The, the, okay. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, the <laughs> Bruce Brown piece. <laughs> right. So he's probably earned himself a lot of money in these playoffs, deservably. I mean, 
kudos to him. I don't know if there's any kind of chance for, you know, I don't want to say giving him, you know, yeah, my money under the is, table. I don't... I don't understand enough about the uh, salary cap stuff here, but my understanding is that the Nuggets can't, like, even if even if they could make it work, even if they were willing to pay the luxury tax or whatever, there's, like, an actual limit on how much... Yeah, they're, they they're actually over the cap, so they can only offer him a 20%. Okay, uh, so, and he's going to get way more than that. To, to, yeah. what, to what he had this year. Yeah, I mean, he could do that. another one plus one, you know, just for security to have two years in case something happens to him. And then sign a bigger I mean, contract, but even then, I guess theoretically, like twelve, not more than that, even yeah. next year. So I mean, theoretically, I guess he could, he could exercise his option if he just really likes the team. But I mean, I, it, I you know, if he's going to get offered eighteen million or something, I don't know what what the market for him will be. But if he's going to, you know, more than double his salary, it's hard to, hard to th- even. Th- it would hard be hard for me to even want him to make that decision. Um, yeah, especially I, I want to be because... paid, you know. Especially we, we keep, because we know he deserves it, unlike right. Jeremy Grant. <laughs> unlike uh, D'Angelo Russell, who's making $30 million and is absolutely unplayable. Horrible, oh, this, this is horrible so series for D'Lo, man. Oh, okay, let, let's move fast. Sorry. Yeah. So KCP, so many great games for him already. You can, you know, probably only point to those game three and game four in Arizona against Phoenix when he wasn't effective against Devin Booker, but I don't know if anybody could have been effective Mm. against that tsunami. But other than that, such an amazing performance from him so far. And I, I, I made a, like an idea is Bruce Brown more, more important to the Nuggets than KCP right now. And it's a, it's a dumb, it's a dumb question because the Nuggets would absolutely be much worse without either of those two. Mm-hmm. Those two are super, super important for the for the Nuggets. So, how imp- impressed are you with KCP? Oh, I, I don't, man. I, I knew when they made the move. Um, I, like, I was always a big fan of this move, and I because I just remembered what he did to us in that Lakers series. He was he was a killer in that series uh, against us. Um, and obviously he's always been a great defensive player. And that's, you know, sort of where he, I think, you know, got his reputation, kind of carved out his, his niche in the league, but man, his three point shooting, like uh, he, he led the league, I think this year, didn't he? in three point percentage, or at least he did for, yeah, for, for a, a portion of the, junk, of the season. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, he's just, a, yeah, he's just, a, he is the prototypical, the exact guy. He's the Bruce Bowen, you know, model or whatever. He's the, the hard-nosed defender who can lock down your best perimeter player and will hit a super high percentage of threes and that is those guys are just invaluable and it's amazing to me again i mentioned this earlier but the fact that the lakers traded him for the most one of the most inefficient you know players of all time and russell westbrook in a massive contract and just, you know, i think so many of their problems you can kind of trace back to that if they would have just built smart around ad and lebron smarter than they did um I think maybe we're having a different conversation today, but uh, yeah, KCP has been huge for this team. And he also seems like he loves playing with these guys. He talks about that a lot. Uh, and he seems like a really good locker room guy, real good glue guy. So, uh, so happy to have him. And I, w- w- we have him at least for another, what, a couple of years, two years or something? Yeah, another two. So, another two. Plus, yeah, I mean, player it's just, option after that. Bruce Brown's tougher. Yeah, because he, he's going to be hard to replace, especially at that salary level. I mean, I think you have to hope for Christian Brown's continued like improvement um maybe they have another young guy or, or two maybe Vlaco or somebody else can, can come along um and uh i don't know I, there's probably there's probably you know the nuggets win the championship too there's going to be some vets and stuff who want to who want to jump on this team and get a shot at a ring so i'm not too worried I don't, like as as hard as it'll be to lose brown i think uh, the fact that we at least have kcp locked up is is good I agree. So the Nuggets started these playoffs with only eight guys and stayed with eight guys. But going forward, honestly, it might come down to six guys because I was impressed with Michael Malone being brave enough to close last night with Jeff Green instead of Aaron Gordon. It was a good move and Jeff was good. Mm -hmm. 
And I mean, I don't know if Jeff was good or just the Lakers sucked so bad because they were out of yeah, breath. This is a real tough series for AG. It's just not. Uh, it's just not his series. It's they need they they need somebody to be able to pull like to, to open the floor up a, a little bit more, and his three point shooting just isn't quite there. Yeah, for some reason he cannot stop Rui Hachimura at all mm. after after doing a great job against KD, which is insane. I mean, it's recency bias. AG yeah. was really really good in these playoffs. Just not in this this last series. That's not for him. Yeah, it's not a it's not a diss on on him. There's just there's some matchups where guys like him. There, there's just some set of 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 strengths and weaknesses that just aren't quite the right fit in this series. And I think of note is that the Lakers aren't doing something that they should be doing, which is not playing D'Angelo Russell. So they have the same problem on their side, which is they have a completely unplayable starter. <laughs> um, who is just getting lit up on defense? I mean, the Nuggets are targeting him whenever they can, and he, he is, he is. And he's and he's terrible on offense. He was one of eight last night at two points. But why is he out there? If he is a <laughs> sorry, he is a bone skyland on a max contract. Yeah, it's unreal. Uh, the Lakers should have benched him after game one. I mean, he, really, he should not be playing in this series. He's unplayable, and they have stubbornly stuck with him, um, feeling like they would need his offense, I, I, I guess, or, or something at some point. Um, but I think they're going to be out. They're going to get swept before they ever, <laughs> before they ever sniff any of that offense he's capable of providing. Yeah, um, reportedly they're scared of him leaving if they bench him. Bye. Like he's <laughs> terrible, <laughs> terrible. Okay. If I'm a Lakers fan, I'm yeah. I, 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 from what I can tell, I think they're pretty done with him. Um, yeah. after this, after this series, I would be if I was a Lakers fan. He's brutal. So, but so yeah, so big credit to Malone though for just saying like, look, yeah, okay, maybe this, this isn't the matchup for AG. Like they they've tried a few wrinkles, so it's just not it's not working. They're getting better results with Jeff Green on the floor, so go with it. And AG, I think is a is a you know pros pro. He'll he'll understand that and he'll he'll bounce back in the next round. There's a reason why Timberwolves gave him up to get ten years old Mike Conley. Mm. You know, Mike Conley is just a better player, and that's that's that. A much better player. Than a lot of people Russell. have uh, have given up on D'Angelo Russell at this point. I, I think it's, yeah, I think it's definitely him. Yeah, he was, you know, drafted second, I think, by the mm -hmm. Lakers. So that will always give you too much air under your wings, right? So yeah, what you gonna do? Okay, now that you said that this wasn't a good series for Aaron Gordon, let's try just for a Not short terrible, time. but yeah, yeah, just. Take a look at the the next next round. So the Lakers will fall in one or two games from now. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's no way they can keep up with the Nuggets until game six, for instance. They quit with two minutes left last night. That's me. right. It, it, That's it was right. over. It was over this, at that point. This is like, why I'm still expecting one of the main guys rolling an ankle in the first quarter right. and just leaving yeah, exactly. the game. And like, we know who that guy will be. Yeah. 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 It would be, wouldn't be the first time. Uh huh. Also, so would you prefer Boston or Miami in the finals? Um, I, I think I prefer Boston, even though I think they're the better team. At least, you know, on paper, talent-wise, they're the better team. Um, Miami just has a you know something special cooking this year um kind of kind of similar to the way the nuggets are you know just kind of blitzing through the western conference i mean they have unbelievably overachieved in the eastern conference and i i think that's more scary a team that's really gelling that's bought in that's playing hard even with limitations i to me i'm a little more scared of that than i am a more talented team that seems to just take whole games off in the playoffs that has a couple of superstars who just disappear um, on a fairly consistent basis, uh, I, I, as good as Tatum and, and Brown are, like they're just—I think they're still like a year or two away from really being serious championship contenders. Even though I, I know they've been to a finals, but um, they just don't seem mature enough yet, or something. I'm not—I'm not sure. I haven't watched enough Celtics games to really be able to put my finger on it. But um, yeah, I think—I think the Heat—I think the Heat scare me a little bit more. 
Jimmy yeah. Buckets, you know. I love this this comment by Zamora on the screen because I agree with him. Um, yeah, Boston is a is a better collection of talents, mm -hmm. player wise, not coach wise, but player wise. And uh, Miami is just too small. Uh, the problem the problem with him with them is you know Bama de Bayo is an amazing defender against anybody except Jokic and Embiid. Mm -hmm. He's just not a true big. He's like six nine. Right. He he doesn't have what it takes to to guard Jokic. Well, they don't have any depth at this point either. They're they're so depleted. Yeah, I mean, at one point of the season they were playing Nikola Jovic at the power forward because they had nobody. Jimmy was hurt for like a couple of months mm -hmm. early in the season, so they. They had to go to a rookie. They weren't even planning on playing this year because they had nobody. And now they've added Kevin Love. Okay, cool. Kevin yeah. Love is a he's a good player. He's a smart yeah. player. And I don't know. I know what's the play. Do they like put Kevin Love on on Jokic and then put Bam Adebayo next to him? <laughs> as I mean, I think the play defender? is they get swept. <laughs> I think that's the play. <laughs> I mean, uh, here the thing is when I said I'd, I think I'd rather Cheers. face, I'd rather face Boston. Um, I, I don't think it matters at this point. <laughs> like, I, and I, I think, well, and I, I guess maybe I am changing my answer here because I think I would rather see the Nuggets play Miami just from as a basketball fan. Um, I just think that's a more fun series, maybe. I, I don't know, but it just I feel like Miami should be rewarded for this crazy run they've been on nobody expected them to do anything and they, they shouldn't have even been really a playoff team um but yeah having said that i mean i don't i just don't see either of the, these series going long i think the nuggets are significantly better than both of those teams so i i i don't know i yeah when i look at, I, th I see matchup problems all over the place for both for both of the teams <laughs> and starting with Jokic. i mean it, it, boston has has more uh to deal with him but Miami has absolutely nothing. Yeah. To, to, yeah. To handle yeah. I don't I think mean, it's going to be. That's the easiest way to analyze it. You know, you have the best player in the series, whoever you're playing against. And let's see if your strength is matched in any way on the other side. And in Boston, you have, you have Al Horford, Horford who is a super mm -hmm. smart guy, mm -hmm. a super long guy. He's not tall enough, but. He's undersized, he, yeah. Yeah, but he has those long arms mm -hmm. and, you know. He can block some shots really, really well, but and I think that's just a better combo against against Jokic. <sighs> I like Miami. I mean, they shut up. down Embiid, so maybe I should be Too more long. scared of them. Yeah, but it's just Embiid. <laughs> it's a guy that cannot play against the double team. Uh -huh. I mean, I'm a bit afraid of this kind of conversation because I kind of sound to myself like Tristan Thompson on ESPN while he was an <laughs> analyst before signing. For the Lakers, like I'm taking the Lakers over everybody, <laughs> and we are now saying, okay, we'll sweep whoever comes uh, in the in the. Uh, yeah, I, I probably mean, won't predict a sweep, but I mean, I mean, I don't know, man. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, Miami is tough because of Jimmy. Jimmy should get his flowers. He has been mm -hmm. top two, top two player in the playoffs. No yep. questions asked. And I'm not even going to rank him in Jokic. I don't care. I yeah. mean, rank them however you want. But uh, it's just a favorable, favorable matchup because they have nobody. And Boston is Boston. Boston is like a, like a, a team that kills itself too often. Like mm -hmm. they have two really, 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 really bad games in every series. Mm -hmm. And... They maybe already have had those against Miami. Maybe they'll just win four straight now. It's possible. It's completely it possible. Po yeah, they're capable of it for in sure. In case of in case of Boston, so yeah, I I hope that series goes to seven, but I'll still prefer prefer Miami over Boston for sure. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Nick, for staying with me. Yeah, all man. To the very end, unlike Always. Jeremy, unlike. Well, that, yeah, I mean. <laughs> Everybody that's ever listened to the dig back in the day, they know that I'm 
much better than Jeremy. So <laughs> you are you are the Nikola yeah. Jokic of podcasts because <laughs> you are always available. Well, that's right. that's the thing. Like like he is he, he pulled has his, an his, his Murray this, moments where he this time makes makes sense. He's from Philly, so yeah, it yeah. makes sense. You can't you can't you can't count on him. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for staying uh, with us until the very end. And uh, enjoy game four against the Lakers. It might be the last one, so enjoy it. And prepare for the grand finals. Next week, we'll probably have a game previewing the, the big finals. The first one in the history of Denver Nuggets' is NBA very exciting. history. It's 47 years of history. Do you know that Denver Nuggets and the Clippers are the only two old teams in the NBA that never played in the finals? Mm-hmm. Like all the other, there are like four other teams, but they're like the new ones, like Memphis. Yeah, yeah, and... yeah. They're the only like from the old yeah. NBA teams yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah so this we is have something. Been long suffering fans, man. <laughs> we are we are changing suffering. this. This is the best team in the franchise history. Yep. Let's embrace it and eat them when I get see.